Okay, in this video, we're going to look by way of example uh, with our chop 21 day regimen how to search for a patient by board number, by date of birth, and cater, counting the cycles, which is very important, adding heights and weights, looking at different views of regimens from 30,000 feet down. Making dose reductions, browsing the NCC re NCCP regimen with an emesis, adjusting the rituximab rate, editing cycle numbers or names. What do we do about home treatment? Signing off a prescription and signing off on treatment, which is otherwise known as admin OK. So here we go. <coughs> Alicia Lepore is our patient. We can access her right here. Or if we didn't see it there, we could just enter her board number. And you can see that there's four different records referring to different tumors. So I'm going to go after the non Hodgkin's lymphoma record. And we're going to also show you. Now we might find her directly in Cato. By instead of searching for her by name, which we can do, but let's say it's a common name, and we feel safer searching by date of birth ten o five. 1990. There's only one of them, so her name turns up, and off we go. Now, back to Ensis chat, and we'll carry on with the demonstration. So, how do we add heights and weights? We go back to Alicia. We click on assessment. And we would add the ice and weights. So we don't need to worry about the time. I don't know if I'm in here because this is a test database. Looks like I am. Let's say she's 176 centimeters and she's 79 kilograms. And this was checked by Pamela. I add the heights and weights in the Ensys chart. I sign this record and save it. And it gets invisibly transferred over to the chemotherapy record prescription. So now I want to plan our job. So I go into therapy. It's not here, there's lots of treatments here. Unfortunately, this patient's been treated to death because she's a test patient. So we'll add a new record. Simply by clicking on this button. And we will search CHOP. We can preview the plan if we're not sure. Otherwise, we notice we can also search by the NCCP code. We'll assign a treatment date for tomorrow. And now we want to do is count the cycles. So we have one cycle, two cycles, and six more. So we have one, two, Plus six is eight cycles in total. That's important. I'm going to choose the day ward as the place of delivery. And then I'm going to change this afterwards to reflect that the first round of chemo is going to be given on the clad ward. <coughs> you can ignore this. It's just telling us that some of the oral chemotherapy is on a Sunday. That's the prednisolone. alive. <coughs> So capacity on the unit has been examined and bed planning has been carried out. 
and you'll notice in a second that it, it pops up and says eight cycles being treated. Now we have different views. So the first thing view I'd encourage is the complete view, which is the thirty thousand foot view, which tells you what different regimens the patient has been through, and it's color coded according to this. So you can see that the last regimen is Archop. And if I want to look at that one, I can just click on it and it will take me straight there. Now this is a therapy view. It's nice, but with a complicated regimen, it takes, up, it takes a lot of scrolling to see everything. So I like this view, which gives a very compact view of things and allows you to check. Um, if there are dose reductions, you'll see a percentage here. And I tend to work mainly with the list view, which I would encourage in terms of reviewing prescriptions and signing off on treatment, because you can do most things in this view. So we're going to do a dosage reduction of cyclophos. Maybe the patient has significant renal impairment. Maybe it's AKI, so we're going to just reduce this dose and see what happens. So I've reduced this down to 75%. And I'm not going to adjust all of them because I feel that the renal function might come back. And you'll notice now there's an orange bar here and here, which indicates variation from standard treatment. Now with the Dr. Ruberson, unfortunately this patient's got hepatic problems as well. So we're going to give them 50% and we don't see that thing resolving. So we're going to adjust all the subsequent cycles all in one go. And visually you'll be able to see this again with an orange bar, <coughs> which replicates through the cycles. And I can access the different cycles up the top right hand corner with these two arrows here. So I'm on cycle one at the moment, um, and I'm just going to right click on that and say on clatter ward. If I wanted to change the number of the cycle, I could just delete the squiggly brackets in the Z and change that to a number. But I'm not going to do that because we're on cycle one. So we're on cycle one here, and we can see that both doses have been reduced. And just to see how that impacts on future treatments, we will scroll through with the arrows. And we'll do it in this view. You can see cycle two. Tops the rubies is at 50%. That's why the orange bar is here and here. But the cycle phosphamides back up to 100%. And we can do it on this view too, which is quite nice. So cycle one, both cycle phosphamide and doxorubicin dose reduced. Cycle two is just the doxorubicin. Cycle three, doxorubicin, and so on. So that's the dosage reductions. We've done the orange bar. Now we're just going to browse the NCCP regimen. We don't have to print it off anymore. All we have to do is click in here and we can see everything. Tests, dose modifications, just as per the NCCP. So you don't have to go to the website anymore. It's all on here. <coughs> Now, if we want to, say, adjust the rituximab rate for cycle, so in order to get rid of all this text, we just click on the up arrow, like so. Let's say for cycle, we want to go to cycle 2, and for whatever reason, we want to adjust the rate of the rituximab. The patient's tolerating it very well and they fulfill all the criteria for, let's say, 
uh, rapid infusion. Uh, in fact, it's already there, 90 minutes. But obviously, if I wanted to give it slower, I could give it slower. And in that case, it would be titrated up, so the pharmacy would send out a titration sheet with it. <coughs> so now we've really come to the business end. The therapy has been planned. All cycles are planned fairly quickly. Um, and we just want to sign off on treatment, let's say, a week beforehand so the pharmacy can know what's coming down the pipeline. So if we click on a row, well, first of all, you can see this risk of emesis. So in order to specify the um, what antiemetic we want, we just click on define the medication selection. And we can just say on Densitron 8 milligram. Thanks very much. <clears throat> so now we go back to the list view, which allows us to do things with more visibility over the whole cycle. And we can sign off on everything pretty much at the same time. Um, but just to note that what pharmacy are principally involved with is day one. And we don't really, at the moment, look at any prescriptions when the patient leaves the day unit. So if you're a physician and you're happy with the doses of everything, then obviously you just want to sign everything in one go. So if I click anywhere here, you see that the row goes blue. And if I then go control A, that means all, I can just change the status to physician verified. And yes, I want, uh, oh, this is cycle two, by the way, but anyway, that's fine. So we will dose to 75% because patient's renal function hasn't recovered. Let's go back up to cycle one where we should have been in the first place. So I'll repeat that, click. Control A, position verify. The Ondansa transmits in there, by the way. <clears throat> now, let's put that under Ondansa tron. And again, you can copy and paste between cycles, uh, but that's for another video. <clears throat> so now that the, the, the um, physician has verified, in other words, has written up their intended doses, pharmacy can get on and process uh, before the patient shows up on the wall and hopefully have the drug ready, depending on how expensive it is. So we can then either the doctor or the nurse will select all the treatment. I'm holding down the shift key here just to select up to here. They can say administration approved, which basically means pharmacy can release the product or make the product depending on the cost. And you can see that the administration being approved is a green tick and that's the flag for pharmacy to release the product. Where there is a cross, that means administration has not been approved and therefore pharmacy will not release the product. In this case, it's prednisolone, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll do admin OK on these as well. Now, as a pharmacist, we log on obviously with different credentials. <clears throat> and our standard for the moment, as far as, so again, let's search by date of birth.
our standard as far as um, what we do with the prescription is cycle six. Oh, we're in the wrong. We're in the wrong regimen here because this fictional patient is on so much treatment. So we can expand or delete that simply by double clicking on the blue bar. So as far as pharmacy is concerned, what they're going to do is control. No, they won't actually. We're not going to do it with pre the pretenders alone because we have nothing to do with that. Right, so click, hold down, shift, click, and pharmacy will verify having specified the product that they're going to use. And now we'll do some rounding on that. I'm not going to show you that uh, at the risk of boring you to death. And then the process starts. So I think we've covered everything there. That's how you do the cyclophosphamide R-chop. And so once it's all set up, let's say the patient comes in, <clears throat> it's, it's pretty quick. Uh, let's look at the complete view if we don't know the patient. Go into that regimen. Look at the compact view just to make things are set up properly. So in order to see the compact view, we need to be in the cycle. Okay, so this all looks pretty standard. Uh, what's missing actually is an antimedic. So again, let's specify the antimedic in the medication selection. Oh, I'm a pharmacist. I have to do that as a doctor. So, oh, okay. Okay, so again, I'm not doing that anymore. We're on our chop. We want to sign off on cycle three. And we're going to do the medication selection. Okay, now I can see in the compact view, everything looks fine. We've got on Dantatron, got our steroids, the list view. And if you're a doctor, then control A. My job is done. We'll keep that at 75% for now. Okay. And one more thing, let's say I'm Dr. Hyatt and I only want to look at my patients. I can refresh the list and those are my patients. Green means prescription is the dose is assigned for. Yellow means the pharmacist is taking it to the next step. So According to this, all Dr. Hyatt's patients for the day are ready to rock and roll. Some of them might not be admin okay. So if I click on that, I might have the option so we can remove admin okay there. You can see the X. And we can 
put it back. So now the patient is clinically well, the pharmacy will release the product. No evidence that the patient is clinically well, the pharmacy will not release the product. If it's expensive, they won't even make it. So that's a very important step. And that's the end.